What's up y'all, Jason here representing Raptor Reptiles. Today I'm back with another video. It's going to be a video about how to set up a dubia colony. So it's going to be my second video in the web series. Um, the next one will probably be about superworms, but this one I got a little bit more, was a little bit more in demand. So um, before we start though, on that video I made about how big will your bearded dragon be, this is now big boy as you can see he's grown really steadily um, he's quite big now and this is my boy Diablo and they were almost about the same size when I did that video now I wonder if I can get a comparison it's kind of hard on by myself but this is them now and as you can see um big boy is a lot bigger so i'm pretty sure he's gonna have that german giant in him um substantially longer and uh heavier now but love these guys are doing great um i just moved them up i built four new um cages for them so I got uh, three for my males and then uh, I'm gonna keep my little guys in there till they get older but uh, yeah they're doing great they're all growing um, can't complain so before I go into the video on how to actually set up um, a breeding colony or this can also be to set up a colony that you want to feed off to your animals so if you buy, you know, 250 or more dubias, I highly recommend keeping them in a nice habitat. This way, they can be more nutritious, they can grow and healthier um, for your dragons or whatever animals you feed them to. Dubia are great for a wide assortment of reptiles. So what I'm gonna show you first is my breeder that I have here. And I'm not pulling any of these feeders from the breeders because it's not ready yet. It's only been maybe cooking for about two months now. Um, so I've been buying about like 250 dubia every, you know, two or three weeks. So they've kind of accumulated over the time. So it's time for me to now move them into a more sustainable habitat. This way they can grow because I'm not feeding them off fast enough. But uh, so it's kind of going to be like my secondary colony. So as the nymphs get bigger in the breeder, I'll combine them in there and then I'll feed off accordingly how I uh, see fit. This colony is growing fast and I'm really happy. Um, all this knowledge that I'm about to share with you is I did a lot of research I watched a lot of videos and by no means am I an expert. I don't do this is not my business um, I don't sell them. I don't make money off of it This is what I found that was easy for somebody that has a lot of reptiles You want to save some money and have some nice feeders. This is what I found was the best um, Definitely beats crickets. They stink um, Superworms aren't that bad, but they're not the best um, could feed like as a staple to your bearded dragon every day they're quite fatty and I noticed that a lot of my uh, females that I was feeding that seemed to like them were putting on a lot of weight since I dropped back to the dubias they've lost some weight which is good because you don't as much as you want to feed your dragon as much as they want to eat um, you know you don't you don't want them being obese I mean they can develop health issues so as much as you love them sometimes you got to restrict them a little bit um, because they would not be getting any of this if they were out in the wild. Um, at least not fed as well. I mean, they're barely getting exercise in here, so they don't have to really hunt for their food. So you gotta just remember that. It's something important to always consider. So let me show you the colony real quick. And then once I show you the colony, I'll go through all the supplies that you need. After all the supplies, I mean, I prepped it for the video's sake so it wouldn't be super long but I'll show you step by step what you need to do and what you'll need. All right, so to start off, you're gonna need a way, especially if you live up north like I do in New York, we're expecting like a lot of snow the, uh, this weekend and it has been dropping, you know, into the 20s and below. So the first thing you need, especially if you want them to breed, is gonna be a heat source for them. So what I figured out was gonna be the best for me is, um, these ultra therm vivarium heating mats and they're sold by reptile basics now if you use the bin that i have i don't recommend this size 
I would recommend the bigger one, which I believe is 23 by 11, but they were sold out. I needed it quick. It was about to get cold. So I got the 11 by 17s. So once I get those in, um, I'll obviously upgrade. Um, next, you're gonna need some packing tape. Just any type of clear packing tape is fine. Scissors, HVAC tape. Um, and then if you wanna sustain your animals, you're also gonna need these miracle Grow water storing crystals. I'll continue to keep them in. I keep them in a gallon sized um, jug. You'll need um, some nutritional bug chow, which you can get anywhere from any of the big retailers. You can find it online on Amazon. And then you're gonna need these egg flats, which I bought, I believe I bought 70 of them for $30 on Amazon, which was the best deal I could find. And then if you want, you can just get some plastic bowls and I'll show you what to do with that. And then you're also gonna need a thermostat. So I bought a Viva Sun off of Amazon because it was uh, the best deal. Seems to be working fine. Um, I have the, um, the thermometer exactly on the heat map. That's why it's reading a little bit more than what it is. It's reading at 99. I have it to cut off at 105. But those heat mats I showed you, they really, they're uh, actually a lot safer than heat tape. A lot of people may say, oh, use heat tape. But uh, these ones that I have last longer than heat tape. They're a little bit more expensive, um, but they're low wattage and they don't heat up past 95. So your chances of melting any plastic are pretty much slim to none. I've had no issues. And you're gonna need a bin. And this bin I bought at um, Home Depot. And uh, this is the lid for the plastic bin. And what I did was, see those little squares that are cut out there? I used a Dremel tool and it cut through it like butter. It was perfect. And what, why you wanna do that is you don't wanna build up any excess moisture because that's gonna create mold in the colony and it can harm the dubia and pretty much wipe out your colony, make your insects not good for your animals. You're gonna need some screen which is like screen for like a sliding uh, glass door or ones that have the cutouts in the doors. You can use that, cut one out that's gonna fit you know, around, around the exterior here. And then you're gonna need a glue gun and then glue gun really thick around all these spots because the dubia are kind of sneaky. So make sure you glue it real nice here. So as you can see, and that'll take care of the lid. Now here's some footage on my existing breeder dubia colony right here and as you can see I have a, a secondary thermometer that I keep up here on the egg flats and it's at 80 degrees which is pretty much optimal for them to breed. Um, so the thermostat on the outside is not the most accurate. I just have that there as a safety precaution. This is how I have it set up. Uh, they got their water crystals there. You see some little guys getting some water. You got the bug chow, and then I got carrots and turnip greens for them. They seem to really like the vegetables the most from what I've seen. So, show you this real quick. Boom. This one's about to drop some babies shortly. So that's how you know um, this colony is doing great right here. It's only two months in the making. I, think I had 100 females, like 20 males. If anyone wants to know what that is, that is the cleaner crew that I got for the dubias. Helps uh, keep it clean in here. Uh, kill off any excess uh, roaches, um, clean out any fungus, bacteria, and just keep the habitat clean. You still have to clean it, I would say every month or so, but it just helps sustain it. So That's them, as you can see there's quite a lot. This is only two months in the making so far. And then you can see how I have the heat 
mat set up here and then obviously I have the thermostat here so the way this thermostat works is you would plug a heat pad into the bottom you'll program it the way the instructions tell you when to, you want it to cut off and then you just plug in the thermostat and then as you can see the thermostats held on here with some HVAC tape so that's the probe So I'd say it's going pretty well, probably in the next six months. Um, I'll be ready to separate my main breeders from the nymphs and then start all over again. So hopefully your goal is to get an endless supply to help you save money and uh, give your animals the most like nutritious food and they actually love them. So. so now once your lid's done, the next step you're gonna do is you want this packing tape here. This is because the nymphs or the smaller dubia, they can actually climb a little bit. Uh, the big ones can't really climb, but they can jump. So just as a little safety precaution, I've heard some people use like Vaseline on the top edge here, or you can use packing tape. I feel like that would create a mess. So I'm just gonna use packing tape and so far it's worked for me. So as close as you can pretty much to the top where the egg flats go, you're going to want to create a packing seal around the whole interior here. Um, this way, if they climb to the top of the egg flat, they want to climb up to the top. They'll slip on this. It's slippery. So that's the whole purpose of that. Um, so that's very important. Not that it really matters because I still have the lid with the screen on it and it's glued in. But, you know, you don't want them getting out anywhere. All right, after that, then you want to mount your thermostat. So you want to mount your thermostat um, on the side where you're going to keep your heat pads closest to. So mine's going to be on the outside this way. I'll have it really visible. I can always see what the temp is. So what you'll need is a drill and a little drill bit here. You'll uh, drill through the plastic with a smaller drill bit than a screw. And then this one I was able to mount here. So I just drilled the nail through the hole here and it was able to hold up quite nicely. So, as you can see there, it's held up. And then you're gonna wanna put your probe, keep it inside the bin. And then, obviously here's the connection for the thermostat, but we'll get to that later. All right, now the next thing we're gonna set up is the heat mats here. So, the most important part here is see where the cord comes out. You want the cord on the top so it can sit here so that the lid can go on if you put it on the bottom it just it'll get stuck in the back and then you're going to risk melting it just not worth it so very important make sure where the plug comes onto the heat mat is at the top and like i said you want to put this as close to the thermostat as possible because you really want one side where the egg flats are going to be. That's the part that you want to be the hottest for them. That's where they're going to breed and hang out most of the time. They're only going to venture onto the cool side pretty much to get food or to get out of the heat. Which I haven't ever seen them venture there that it got too hot. <laughs> they're usually too cold. So I'm going to place it right here towards the end here. And then for video's sake I'm going to have to cut the video because I'm by myself. But... I'm gonna take that HVAC tape, which is resistance to heat, very important. And then you're gonna tape the sides down. Do not tape over the plug here, because that could be a fire hazard. And you wanna tape up all the sides, make sure it's on there real nice. Here's another uh, tip too. See this clear part right here, and then see the gold part? You don't wanna put the HVAC tape over the gold part. You wanna put it only on the plastic. Um, part right here so this is how I'm gonna um, tape it once it's in the bin try not to cover the gold part also remember that heat rises so make sure you get those heat mats closest to the bottom of the bin as you can so now here's one side of the heating that's complete so as you can see I taped on the two tops in between the plugs and then just one on the side for good measure just to hold it in there. And that should be plenty. They're not that strong and 
They're not really going to be moving it around much. Alright, so once that's done, we're almost home free here. So the important thing was, see, I see, see this probe right here at the bottom. I put it up here and through here. And I put it right on the middle of the heat pad. And now the important part is this heat pad right here. If you follow this. It's plugged into the thermostat. This thermostat only came with uh, one plug. So obviously put the if you put the probe on whatever heat pad, that's the heat pad that you plug into the thermostat. So hopefully I made that clear. So now I got dual heat pads on the side. Closest to the bottom, the heat will rise. You'll see once I put in the egg flats and everything, how uh, everything comes out. So as you can see, the egg flats are in. Um, I only put eight in. It's not necessary to put that many unless you have a huge colony. So I kind of put four, you know, stacked, um, leaning towards one side, and then four leaning stacked towards the other. And that's good enough for me. You don't want to cram it so tight where you can't pull out an egg flat in case you want to grab and feed them to your animal. It's kind of a pain in the ass. And then once they're on there, you got to shake them out. So from my experience, I usually do one less than what will keep it like really crammed in there. So eight seems to work good for me. So uh, that's what I did. Now I'm going to prepare the food and everything. Then I'll put in the dubia and show you uh, the end product. All right, now here, nothing fancy now to set up the habitat. So here's just a plastic bowl I bought, you can buy anywhere. Um, and pretty much what I did was, like I said, they won't be able to climb into this. So what I did was I took the scissors and I cut out these edges here so that they can access the water crystals and so that they can access the bug chow. Um, and then for the ones that I put, um, the vegetables on, I just cut a real small one here because Make sure you, if whatever they don't eat, you replace it every day or so. So I only do a small one, I only give them enough so that they can eat. You don't want it getting scattered around because that's what's going to cause um, mold and uh, fungus and all that. And bacteria could kill your colony, could make your animals sick, so very important. So this helps me maintain a small amount of food, so that's why I do it. You can do it as big as you want as long as you check on it. So what you'll do first is you'll probably fill up your jug here about, I would say halfway to three quarters full of water. Pour in a decent amount of the water crystals, like a handful or so. Let, let it absorb, because you can't use standing water in Dubia. They don't uh, drink standing water. That's also gonna cause a lot of humidity and bacteria, and it could be detrimental to your colony. Um, and then you'll need the bug chow. And then, like I said, for their staple food, I happen to have uh, turnip greens. You can give them any greens, they love them. And then I hear just take a carrot here. So I still do my secret here. I fill a Ziploc bag with the alfalfa powder. Open it up. Then I literally just crack it because they'll consume all this. You can cut them up. I mean, they're, uh, they're roaches so I really don't like I'm not too concerned with how nice it looks or if it has skin on it shake it up bada bing bada boom open up now you got an alfalfa encrusted uh, carrot here so I put the carrot down first shake it up Drop it down. Turn up greens. Just eyeball. Kind of stack it high. And then, since this colony's not that big, I mean, this will this will pretty much do for now. Then I'm gonna take this one.
they do drink a lot of water so um, I do give them a decent amount of water crystals and then that'll be that so I'll put that in so now once that's in I almost forgot my little secret blend here that I made I actually learned this from a youtuber unfortunately I can't remember his name or I'd give him the credit um, but what he recommended for a high protein for them was high protein uh, fish food turtle food and um, I got chicken feed for baby chickens non-medicated and uh, so I take all that mix it all up together in here so you get that and then I added a decent amount of calcium so because you're feeding them off I'm gut loading them now with calcium high protein they have the option then for the fiber with the um, with the vegetables and then they have water crystal and that's plenty to sustain them so on that I'll do like a you know not too much decent amount here I recommend not doing this on a table just do it in the bin I'm just doing this for the video sake you don't want to make a mess and then to pop that off I'll take my nutritional bug chow sprinkle that on top got load them even more and with that trifecta combo right there you're gonna be you know feeding your dragons or whatever reptile some really high protein high calcium and uh, hydrated um, full of vegetable dubia which is the best dubia it's better than you know picking one up off the side of the street that's got no not any nutritional value than its base so you're really gut loading them with this and I've noticed it your dragons get fuller faster they grow faster just better for them so when you're dealing with feeders it's very important to you know treat your feeders well because in the end that's what you're giving to your animal so if you neglect them don't feed them they're not going to be as nutritious you're kind of throwing your money out and you're harming uh, you know your animals in the long run uh, this is your final product right here without the dubias in it here's the cover which what I told you what to do take the Dremel um, you can cut out a square if you don't get the exact bin I do just enough to let the excess moisture out you need to have some ventilation in there because you're keeping it closed dubias like the dark and that'll help maintain the heat um, you're gonna need the screen then you're gonna glue the screen on as you can see right here then you're gonna set up your thermostat right here then you're gonna set up the barrier so like the packing tape or whatever you decide to do if you want to use Vaseline you can look up other things people do online then you're gonna set up the heat mats you can use flex watt heat tape this is only a recommendation this is what I do you can use whatever you want you can use a heat lamp you could use flex watt heat tape you could use heat mats it's whatever you want to do this is what I do and it's been working for me and I feel it's the safest but whatever you do is your choice and your decision so don't come to me and be like oh you told me to use this and it didn't work well this is what works for me and then you see I put the egg flats in here I got the high protein mix with the bug chow the water crystals and the vegetables for vitamins fiber and alfalfa they love it um, that's really it use no substrate it's just gonna create fungus and bacteria and mold you do not need any substrate at all it's quite easy to maintain check up on them you know every day every other day if you can um, refill what's missing as far as food wise and before you know it they grow fast and they reproduce fast and before you know it, you'll have a full colony and uh, hopefully be saving money so this whole combo right here I mean you're looking at maybe anywhere from I'll say 100 to 150 depending on how much of each thing you buy if you buy in bulk if you have the tools already if they go out and buy the tools but just keep in mind I mean you can go through $150 worth of feeders pretty quickly so it's an investment it takes some time you have to be patient and uh, before you know it you'll be producing your own feeders uh, for your reptiles so this is the 
raptor reptiles do be a colony and remember this is what I do I'm not telling you what to do this is what I do it works for me so if you want to follow somebody else by all means I don't sell them it's not my business but for convenience and budget reasons <laughs> it's been working out great so hope you all enjoyed the video um, rate comment and subscribe I'm just gonna go ahead and add these dubias and then I'll do the super worm video next and maybe eh, I don't really need to do a blue horned worm or you know wax worm unless you absolutely need me to most people ship them with the food and the habitat that's disposable so I don't really feel like it's necessary but please let me know any other videos you want um, I'm probably gonna do an update on my colony shortly once I finish these last two bottom cages, I need to touch them up, and then uh, we'll go from there. Enjoy. Everything seems to be working real nice. The thermostat's heating up. Looks like they already chowed down on a little bit of food. And then, let's see where they're hiding. And see, they love to just hide in these egg flats here. And these are the ones that I will feed off to my dragons. So, all in all, they went right to the heat source and right to the egg flat. So, happy the way this one turned out as well. And I'll be expecting the same results. Thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know any other videos you guys want. And uh, hope this helps out. Just keep in mind, this is the way I make my raptor reptiles do be a colony you guys can make it however you want because there's multiple ways and there's tons of ideas out there but for budget reasons um, and convenience this one seemed to work out the best for myself so enjoy so now after talking about the genetics a little bit just to touch uh for say wasn't that difficult to build and it cost us around